guitar is a fairly complex construction made up of a number of interacting components. So first of all, there are the primary resonating components, the strings. Then there's the neck of the instrument and the fretboard. Then there's the uh, body of the instrument. And then finally, the acoustic field into which sound is ultimately radiated. But then there's the player, and in particular, the player's fingers, which aren't just there to excite the instrument through plucking, but to control changes in the way in which the instrument sounds, from uh, simple changes in pitch to more subtle effects, such as tapping or playing on the harmonics. Needless to say, physical modeling synthesis is really only in its infancy when it comes to this instrument. To start off with, let's move back to the most basic case of a string vibrating in isolation. In the guitar, the string is plucked at a given location and then vibrates, producing a number of harmonics. There are a lot of different ways to model the vibration of a string. In the Nest project, we make use of time-stepping methods in order to fully model the behavior of the string over a grid and at a given sample rate like, for example, 44.1 kHz. This isn't the cheapest way to model a string, but it's quite general and it lends itself to the types of extensions that we're interested in, in the case of a guitar. Here is a single plucked note. This kind of sound is quite static. We can liven things up a little by adding more strings to produce basic strum gestures. Things get a lot more interesting when we introduce the fretboard, which functions as a barrier. If the amplitude of the string gets too high, it will bounce off the barrier. And this happens everywhere along the fretboard, and especially at the raised bumps called frets. This distributed collision interaction is one of the main reasons why it's useful to have a grid representation of the string, so that we have access to what's going on everywhere along it. The interaction is called nonlinear, and in quite a strong way. This is due to the multiple complex bounces of the strings off the frets. Here's a simple example of a set of open strings being strummed with increasing force so that you can hear the rattling of the strings. Up until now, we've just looked at the case of open strings. But in order to really play a guitar, your other hand, the one not doing the plucking, needs to push on the strings, trapping them against the neck of the guitar. On top of this, your fingers need to be able to move around during play. This leads to complex note transitions where, with a full physical modeling synthesis algorithm, you can hear effects such as the quantization of pitch due to the fretboard, as well as the rattling of partially trapped strings against the fretboard. Here's a typical bar chord gesture. You also have control over how hard you press on the strings. If you press very lightly, you can play on the harmonics. Here's a typical gesture. Of course, the real point of physical modeling synthesis is not just to emulate the sound of a real guitar, but to allow the musician to go somewhat beyond this. Here's a sound produced by a virtual player with an impossibly flexible six-fingered hand. I hope that you've gotten some idea of the kind of sound you can get through detailed modeling of a musical instrument. Of course, there's still a lot left to do, but we're busy at work on it as part of the NEST project. To find out more about the NEST project, come visit us online.